Hello guys, welcome to Steve Knows. We have some great news. The Oculus Quest no longer needs a USB 3 connection to use the Oculus Link, which I know is epic news for many of you because you may not have a USB 3.0 port on your computer or a cable that actually supports that kind of connection. And now you can use the Oculus Link and play some amazing PC VR games without having to shed out money for something like virtual desktop. So I'm gonna go through the USB 3 connection and USB 2.0 connection, show you the differences, play some games with the 2.0 connection, and see what this is all about, see what the issues are, and see if it's actually playable. This was made apparent after a Reddit user posted on the Oculus Quest subreddit to do with this connection now available via the public test channel in the version 17 desktop application. So to enable this, open your Oculus desktop application, go to the settings, then beta, and enable the public testing channel. Once enabled, I did restart the app and I had to wait a while until I was prompted to update the application. Once this is done, confirm that you have version 17 by going settings, then general, and scrolling all the way to the bottom. So I'm now plugging in a USB 3.0 here, the blue one, and plugging it into my headset and to the computer. You can see that it worked and it runs, we have a connection. So let's test this. And it seems that we have just under two gigabit speed on this thing, which is great. We are all connected, great speeds, more than enough to enjoy some great PC VR gaming. So now let's try the USB 2.0 port here. I'm plugging it into the Quest and then into the computer, into the black one here, that's a 2.0 port. I did run into issues with this thing. Sometimes it wouldn't register the connection, sometimes it would, but I got best results when I plugged it into my 3.0 port and then into my 2.0, which, it I know it's odd because people who don't have a 3.0 connection are going to use the 2.0 and they can't use this method, but that's what I found worked for me. You may have to fiddle with it. You can now see that the USB 2.0 is connected, but what's interesting here is that you have a warning message saying USB 3 is recommended. This is highlighted. It's not a red X saying an error, just orange that it is a warning. So let's test out this connection. I got 360 megabits per second, which is much, much less than 3.0, but it's still a valid connection. And that's not bad for USB 2.0 because the high end that you'll expect, kind of the best that you're gonna get out of this is around 480. Also on the page here, it says USB 2 as evidence that I'm not lying to you, this is real. So now let's boot up the Oculus Quest, try the home, try a few games and see what we actually get out of this thing. So we're in the home area. This is working very smooth. It looks great actually. In this home hub, I couldn't really tell the difference. I had no issues here. It works perfectly. So let's start a simple game, not a high-end one, something like Pistol Whip. Of course, Pistol Whip is a great game. It's just not hardware intensive. Pistol Whip using USB 2.0 looked incredible. No delays, no latency that was really noticeable. I was actually really impressed with this 2.0 connection. Pistol Whip, perfect. Now let's see how this holds up against something like Half-Life Alex, Robo Recall, some more graphically intensive games. So in the menu of Half-Life Alex, no problems there. But immediately as I actually started a game using high-end graphics, I had lagging, I had stuttering, and it made it nearly unplayable. This wasn't great. And at least you couldn't play it for extended periods of time. But it did help if I put the graphics on low. It did help slightly, but it was still stuttering. It wasn't that great. And I didn't really expect it to be so when I'm using this USB connection, which is only providing 20% of the speed the 3.0 can provide. Some latency is expected. I also tried Robo Recall because it's a cross-buy game. So if you've got this on the Oculus Quest, you can then play it on your PC with some incredible graphics. And this, despite a few issues, a few little bugs that I ran into, like where it was loading, there'd be an initial stutter when a wave of enemies were coming in. It ran pretty decent on high-end graphics. This game is definitely playable with high-end graphics using a USB 2.0 connection with 360 megabits per second data transfer speeds. Something that you should know though, if you're using USB 2.0 or using a USB-A, and it also varies depending on the cable that you have, that the power that is going to be supplied to the headset is going to be reduced. So you may not be able to play plugged in for like an entire day and you'll definitely need to make sure that your Quest is charged before you start playing using the Oculus Link because it won't be able to charge your headset while you play because the power supply provided by USB 2.0 is nearly half of 3.0. But it's still not an issue. You're still gonna be able to play for an extended period of time. It's just something to be aware of because you don't want your headset to be dead. Get excited to play a game and you have to wait for it to charge. But still, this is a very, very nice addition and one that's going to allow so many more people to play some great PC games via the Oculus Link at no extra cost either if they already have a gaming PC. But please be aware, you won't be able to enjoy some of the big, latest and greatest titles. You may have to mess with your settings, such as like The Walking Dead or Half-Life on Ultra. 
It's just, it can't handle it. So I hope you found this news very helpful. It's definitely good news for the community as it opens up more possibilities for those that previously couldn't. So that's it from me today, guys. Please stick around for next time so you don't miss out on any of the latest and greatest virtual reality news. Thanks to my patrons, you absolute legends. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.